chapter 2, verse 46, describes the characteristics of the church and the believers continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. And what was the impact of what they were doing? Acts chapter 2, verse 47, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. My brothers, my sisters, I'm making a big pause because what I'm going to say is disturbing. But I would like you to think about this question. How can we explain that such an amazing beginning of the church became only a historical event? How do we explain that? As a pastor, it grieves me to say that people in the church are bored. They don't pay attention. There is no passion for the lost or for the hurting. As a matter of fact, I think that the ones that are lost and hurting are the people in the church. But we don't want to admit that we are the ones that need God. People in the church are dead in our sins. That's why the churches are not growing. By the things we do and the things we say, we, the church, have grieved the Holy Spirit. And when people come to the church and they say, well, I didn't feel the Holy Spirit. Of course not. We are continually grieving the Holy Spirit to the point that He is no longer in our churches. How many can tell me that you know the doctrine of the apostles? How many of you can tell me that you know the doctrine, the, the sound doctrine of your denomination? What are the basics of the faith? Who can tell me that? In the church, we are so divided and we are preoccupied by the differences of our political affiliations, our political opinions. That matters most than learning about the sound doctrine. It is very sad to say that in the church there is no longer the joy of the Lord. We come seeking emotional moments that make me feel good for a moment. That is not the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord remains with you as you leave the church. In the church today, and I'm sorry to say this, is there fellowship? Are we seeking to have fellowship with one another? In the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are hurting one another.
another. We are gossiping against one another. We are speaking evil about one another. We are destroying, killing the reputation of one another. We are complaining about one another. We are complaining even about the pastors in the church instead of going to them and talking about the problems. We're stabbing each other in the back. In the church today, there, there are people that come into our temples and sanctuaries to kill, literally to kill. The last thing I'm going to say, we Christian believers are neglecting our churches. We don't come to church anymore. And even if we come, we don't even give an offering or a tithe or um, nothing. There is no real support to the church moral, financial. It seems like people come to church to attack and to take. When we don't give to the church, that truly shows our lack of love for God and for the needy in our communities. How many can say that in your local church you go with joy and to praise God and to receive the word from the Lord? Moms and dads tell their children, let's go to church. Oh, no, oh, no, I don't want to go. Because when you go back home, all you do is complain and, and criticize the sermon, criticize the pastor, the leadership, and the other people in the church. Why would you think children would want to come to church? In the church, I can't even say the Lord, the church of the Lord, because in the church, those buildings that we call church, those places that we call church, Jesus Christ is no longer the Lord of those churches. He's not the head of those churches. And among many of the people that go to church, Jesus Christ is no longer the Lord. We need to repent and pray. Lord Jesus, we are in your presence in this temple, in this sanctuary. And I have to ask you, Lord, to please forgive us. We have abandoned and neglected the most important things that the apostles taught. The most important being our confession of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord. We don't say that anymore as a church. We say Jesus is the Savior of the world. And we have wonderful songs about it. And please, Lord, forgive us because we have forsaken the truth that Jesus, besides being our Savior, he needs to be our Lord. Lord Jesus, forgive us because in our churches, in many churches, we don't preach the sound doctrine anymore. And we have allowed people to continue to spread whatever gospel they are preaching 
and we haven't corrected anybody in their wrong teachings. We haven't stopped them, and that's how the church is so divided. And in the same church, we hate one another. We despise one another. We criticize one another. Heavenly Father, forgive us because we don't have our set, our eyes set on Jesus. We're looking at little details, things that we don't like as persons. But we don't even care about what you like, what you want, Lord. Please forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for the many ways that we have mistreated one another in your church. Heavenly Father, give us of your Holy Spirit. We need your help because in our human strength, we cannot do much good. We need you. Help us build your church. Help us establish the foundation that is Jesus Christ. And that confession of faith that Jesus is the anointed one of God. Help us, Lord, come back to the beginning. Lord, whatever you did in Acts chapter 1 and 2, do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Help us go back to the beginning and do it again, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You're dismissed.